Okay, did it just get really interesting up in here, or is it just me? Because earlier this morning, we had ourselves the NHL publish what is going to be their updated Norris Trophy Tracker post. Now, they've done this for a few awards. I mean, Rick Tockett seems to be the front runner for winning the Jack Adams, which is awesome. That's great to see. And there are some other things they have posted about for some of these other awards. But when it comes to the league's mightiest defenders, oh, that's really nice. Very 80s right there. The mightiest defenders of the league. That's funny. Who is your pick for the Norris Trophy this season? NHL goes out there and asks. Here is the trophy tracker for the Norris as 15 NHL.com writers cast their vote with points awarded on a 5-4-3-2-1 basis. The leader at this moment in time, with 69 points, a very nice amount of points, is none other than Quinn Hughes. Second place, with 56 points on a 5-4-3-2-1 basis, is Kale McCarr. And third place is Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators, with 45 points. Now, there were some other guys who received 10-plus points, like Victor Hedman and Evan Bouchard, but this seems to be shaping up to be our Norris projectable candidates at this point. Quinn Hughes is going to get nominated, Kel McCarr might get nominated, and Roman Yossi, I feel, is in a territory where he probably should get nominated too. The reason I say things have gotten very interesting is because when it comes to this Hughes versus McCarr thing that we've been talking about for pretty much the entire season at this point. We have made a few videos talking about how some voters are more privy to Kale McCarr because he's got more goals, yada yada yada, but it turns out Kale McCarr might not even be the closest comparison to Quinn this season if you're trying to look at who should be contending for this award. The reason I say this is because we had ourselves a post made by Dom Lucician on The Athletic going out there and posting the NHL Awards Watch. Final edition has Nathan McKinnon narrowly leading an extremely tight four-person battle for the MVP. This is The Athletic's pre-playoffs, what do you call this, Awards Watch article. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and read this yourself. Of course, it's The Athletic, it's paid for material, so we're not going to go out there and read this on this video. But if you look at what Dom says about the Norris race, he writes this, that offensively, the edge actually belongs to Roman Yossi. The race is closer than the province of British Columbia will tell you. Now, all Quinn Hughes 3 B tier talk aside, what exactly is there going for this? What does this mean? There are some replies going out there and saying, oh yeah, I don't believe you, the edge belongs to Yossi, that's why nobody takes him seriously, yada yada yada, Dom Lucician, Quinn Hughes, it's whatever. But if you go over to the two players involved here, let's talk about Quinn Hughes, and let's not talk about Kale McCarr, let's talk about Roman Yossi instead. Things actually have gotten very interesting when you consider the offensive capabilities of both of these guys. Quinn Hughes has himself 91 points in 80 games played, 17 goals and 74 assists, over a point per game guy. He is a few points away from actually tying Roman Yossi's cap era record of defenseman points in a season with 96. Now, Quinn Hughes may not get five points in his last two games to overtake Yossi, but that's okay. He's still going out there and doing his thing. 91 points in 80 games is very, very good. But Roman Yossi this season has 85 points in 82 games played. No projection here because the season for Nashville is over. They played their last game yesterday. Yossi was over a point per game, and he's got 23 goals too. Quinn has 17 goals in comparison. Quinn also has more assists, which is the reason why Roman Yossi is a little bit tighter up there in points. But when you talk about the teams that these guys are playing on, this is where it gets a tad interesting because the Nashville Predators were led by Philip Forsberg and Roman Yossi. Gustav Nyquist, Ryan O'Reilly, and Tommy Novak, of all people, also rounded out the top five of scoring on the Predators. Meanwhile, if you go over to the Vancouver Canucks, not only was Quinn Hughes also a top guy, but you had Besser, Petey, and Miller all rounding out the top four with 70 plus points on top of that. If you go over from Nashville to Vancouver, it's easy to see that Vancouver has had better offensive stars, and it's not even really close. I mean, the Canucks have one 100-point player, an 80-point player, and a 70-point player to go alongside of the defenseman. Nashville, on the other hand, has a 90-point guy, an 80-point guy, and then two 70-point guys if you wanted to round up for Ryan O'Reilly. 
plus the depth as the team goes down. I mean, 13 players on the Predators have 20 or more points. On Vancouver, 20 or more points was accomplished by 14, and it's a little bit higher up there since Andre Kuzmenko played half the season. So it is a little tight, but offensively, if you wanted to say that the Nashville Predators are not as high octane offensively as a team compared to Vancouver, I think that's a fair point to make. And when it comes to the production, this is why Dom says offensively the edge actually belongs to Yossi, not Makar, not Hughes, but Roman Yossi. In fact, when it comes to the most valuable player in the heart rankings, Quinn and Yossi are both listed here, whereas Kale Makar is not. You can see the Hart Trophy rankings. The Athletic has McKinnon, Matthews, McDavid, Kucherov, followed up by Quinn Hughes, Yossi, Connor Hellebuck, Sam Reinhart, David Pasternak, and Artemi Panarin. So it's a very interesting argument to have for the Norris because Kale McCarr, while he is listed as one of the top guys, he isn't actually placed by some of the NHL Athletic people as to being one of the most valuable players for his team. Nathan McKinnon has taken that crown instead. Now, I get it, you could say that Kale McCarr is always going to be involved in the Norris conversation because it doesn't matter how many points he has, Kale McCarr is Kale McCarr, and he has that reputation of being one of the top defensemen in the world, he has always been that, so seeing him in here is not too surprising, and in fact, if you go over to the points for a defenseman, I mean, he's second right there, so it would make sense to include him. But the Colorado Avalanche do have a 140-point player in Nathan McKinnon, so could you use that to discredit McCarr's season whilst using the argument of Nashville guys to propel Roman Yossi? That's also a conversation to be having. Now, I also wanted to go over some of the Vancouver media's perspective because Cody Severson had a really good thread from yesterday where he did all of his number crunching. I wanted to go out there and read this. Of the 270 goals scored by the Canucks, Hughes was on the ice for 160 of them. The third highest on-ice presence for goals scored amongst all NHL skaters, second only to Kucherov and McKinnon. Only three defensemen were on the ice for more than 50% of their team's total goals, Hughes, McCarr, and Yossi. Hughes, with 91 points and 160 goals scored with him on the ice, ranked ninth amongst defensemen with at least 41 games played. Hughes also led all defensemen with most points on those team totals of 91 of 270. Only 30 skaters with more than 41 games played had a goal presence, which is on ice goals for, divided by the team goal totals, points shared, which is points divided by on ice goals for, and team goal presence, which is points divided by team goal totals, of 30% or higher. The two guys were Yossi and Hughes. So with this in mind, acknowledging that the Colorado Avalanche are still doing just fine when Kale McCarr is not on the ice compared to what the Predators and the Canucks are doing when Yossi and Hughes are not on the ice, it's actually a lot more apparent that Hughes and Yossi should be the one-two compared to Kale McCarr, and that's kind of why I wanted to make this video. Things have gotten very interesting because now you're having Predators fans going out there and talking about Roman Yossi's crazy good year, not necessarily because Roman Yossi is the top scoring defenseman, no, he's third, but when it comes to impact on the ice in comparison to the rest of the team, Roman Yossi is that guy. He is debatably as important as Quinn Hughes. And you have Predators fans going out there and saying, yeah, I've pretty much accepted that Yossi won't get it. Quinn Hughes is deserving, but it's rough knowing that Yossi has two of the maybe five to six best defenseman seasons of the last three years, and is going to have no Norris trophies to show for it. Like, if there was a three-year award, I have no doubt in my mind that Yossi would be the most deserving of 21 to 24, and he'll come away with zero Norrises in that span. And that's also kind of nuts, because, um... When you think about this 96-point season he had in 2021-2022, who won the Norris that year? Yeah, it was Kale McCarr. So, um... Yeah, now sure, Roman Yossi won the Norris in 2020, but that season was not really the season where he outproduced all these other guys and he had 90 plus points. I mean, he had 65 points in 69 games played. The league was different back then. Scoring was a little bit down compared to what we're seeing nowadays. But either way, even though Roman Yossi does have a Norris to his name, he hasn't been rewarded for these crazy years that he's put up over the past three seasons or so. Now, whether or not you want to say that's indignant, that's your call, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as to how apparently, based off of some of the numbers, Roman Yossi is the biggest challenger for Quinn Hughes for the Norris, and not necessarily Kale McCarr. The NHL writers are saying it's McCarr, but a lot of the athletic people and number crunching people are saying that it is Yossi instead. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this entire Hughes versus Yossi debate. I hope you enjoyed this video, Ashraul 9.
and bye.